Welcome back to our trigonometry series. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of different ideas in this video. We're going to look at some of the fundamental identities. So what are the ones that are fundamental to us? We're going to look at how do we verify the identity? And then we're going to get a brief toe in the water for sum and difference formulas. So one of the first fundamental identities is going to help us relate sine and cosine to one another. So if we know that cosine of an angle is 5 over 8 and it's located in quadrant 4, then we want to find the sine theta value. In the previous lectures, we've shown you how to take this into the coordinate plane and sketch a triangle and then you can find all six figures from the triangle. This is an alternate way of doing that. I can use the fundamental identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. This is a formula I want you to pause the video and to copy down on a formula sheet paper that you will keep separate throughout the duration of this chapter. If I know this, then I can plug in five over eight and square it as the value of cosine. Then I can subtract that from both sides and I know that sine squared theta is 39 over 64. I can take the square root to get sine alone, and I know that it's going to be positive or negative, square root of 39 over 8. The thing is that it's in quadrant 4, so I know the actual sine is negative. So if you answer in the lab plus or minus square root of 39 over 8, it's going to be wrong because the direction set says that it's in quadrant 4. And we know that in quadrant 4, sine is negative, so you're going to have to enter it with the negative sign. If I want to find tangent, I can relate it to the fundamental identity that tangent is the sine value divided by the cosine value. Well, now that I know my sine and my cosine value, I'm able to plug those in and then I'm going to use what I know about fractions. So the way I would get to this final answer is I would take negative square root of 39 over 8 and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which would be 8 over 5. And when I do that, the 8s are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with 5 in the denominator. Now, if I want to find secant of negative theta, that is going to be the fundamental identity of 1 over cosine of negative theta, which would give me 1 over cosine theta. Again, I want you to copy the down the fundamental identities that are in blue onto a formula sheet that you're going to keep for the duration of this chapter. Then I can replace it with 1 divided by 5 eighths. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of 5 eighths, which is 8 over 5. And 1 times 8 over 5 is just 8 over 5. If I want to express tangent in terms of cosine, then what I can do is I can take that fundamental identity and I can translate sine theta into plus or minus 1 minus, the square, minus cosine squared theta. If I know that tangent is sine over cosine, I can then say, well, if sine theta equals this statement, then I can take that sine and divide it by cosine, which is going to give me tangent related to cosine. So in this case, if I want to write 1 plus tangent squared over 1 minus secant squared in terms of sine and cosine, then I'm going to use those same fundamental identities. I know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine. I know that 1 minus secant squared doesn't really relate to a fundamental identity, so I'm going to factor a negative out. When I factor that negative out, this is a fundamental identity that negative tangent squared equals or tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. You need to copy that down onto a sheet of paper. This is on page 657, so that you know tangent squared equals secant squared theta minus 1 on your formula sheet. And then what I can do with the 1 plus tangent squared theta is I can take that, and that is going to be equal to secant squared theta because I've just solved that identity slightly differently. So I've taken this tangent squared equals secant squared theta minus 1. I added 1 to both sides to get that secant squared. Once I've reduced it algebraically as far as I can, I'm going to replace them with their sine and cosine counterparts. We know that tangent is sine over cosine, 
and that secant is 1 over cosine theta. Those should both be in your formula sheets. That's going to simplify to negative 1 over sine squared of theta. If I don't want to have a quotient, I can say that that would be equal to cosecant squared theta because we know that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Again, that should be in your formula sheet, which you're keeping for this chapter. So now that we have those basic fundamental identities, there are going to be some problems you're going to ask to do where you're verifying an identity. In the lab, they don't often ask us to verify things. A lot of times they ask us to simplify things. And what that is going to be is a blend of algebra and those fundamental identities. So in this case, if I start by multiplying both sides by secant theta, I'm keeping things nice and balanced. And I'm rewriting one plus, I'm rewriting the secant theta as one over cosine theta because I want to take this expression on the left and make it equal to what's on the right. When I do that, I'm going to distribute the 1 over cosine through, and I know that sine over cosine is tangent, and cosine over cosine is 1, so this would be 1 plus tangent theta. Now the question becomes, how did I know to take secant and turn it into cosine? Because what's on the right-hand side is tangent, the only way I can get to tangent is if I have things in terms of sine and cosine. So that's how I knew to convert secant over to 1 over cosine. Here's another example. If I want to verify this identity, cotangent squared, tangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta, my starting point is I should recognize tangent squared theta plus 1 as a fundamental identity. That equals secant squared theta. So I'm going to replace what's inside the parentheses with secant squared theta. Now the only way to get to cosecant is going to be to recopy these things in terms of sine and cosine. And when I do that, I'm using the fundamental identities in blue. My cosines are going to cancel and I know that 1 over sine is simply cosecant. So I've put the identities I've used on the right-hand side to help you. Here is another example. I want to verify this identity that the left equals the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I notice that the right-hand side has cosine, which means I need to recopy my tangent and my secant in terms of sine and cosine. So I applied my fundamental identities. Once I did that, I multiplied by the reciprocal of cosine squared over 1, which is going to give me sine squared theta. I know that sine squared s is 1 minus cosine squared, which does, in fact, factor. So that's a little bit of a more complex one because a lot of the ones we were doing were ending in that earlier step but we did have to go back and apply some algebra. In this problem, I know that I need to get over to cosecant and tangents, so I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation first. I'm going to multiply this by the um, subtraction so that I will get something at the, pop, the top that's going to be a fundamental identity. I'm going to get secant squared minus tangent squared, which we know that to be 1 from the fundamental identity. Then I'm going to deal with that sine and that tangent and secant inside the parentheses. I know that um, I can break this fraction up in the denominator to 1 over sine, which would be cosecant. That's how it wound up in the top and not at the bottom and I need that cosecant at the top, and then look at my bottom. It is ready and there. Here is another example. I'm looking at cotangent and cosecant, but I need to make it match those cosine values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine using those fundamental identities. Then I'm going to simplify them by getting a common denominator at which point I get cosine theta minus 1 equals over cosine theta plus 1, which isn't quite where I want to be. 
So I'm going to work towards factoring the numerator. Then I'm going to distribute the negative. I'm going to factor the denominator. And then I'm going to simplify to get my final answer. This one is quite a bit of tricky algebra. So it's not exactly in line with what you're going to be seeing in the lab. Here is an example of applying the Pythagorean identity to radios. In the lab, if we're given a question where 5 cosine squared of 620 million T, and I'm given that the energy of my capacitor is given by this secondary equation. If I want to write a simplified expression for the total energy of the circuit, I would add those two expressions together. And if we remember our fundamental identities, I can know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So it becomes 5 is the total energy. So we can apply that Pythagorean fundamental theorem to a lot of different problems.